Hello beautiful and welcome to this week's new makeup releases where Indie Brands truly has kicked it into the higher gear and Charlie Tilbury shows you that money really cannot buy you style. If you have not been here before, welcome. Welcome to this little place. I love makeup, I love beauty, I still love talking about makeup and using makeup. I'm actually wearing the new Unearthly Spring Magic Collection. I did film this as a little um, shorter tutorial. I'm gonna do some swatches soon as well. And this is the series where every Friday we sit down and we chat about the new makeup that's been released, announced in Sneak Peek. And just go going over what's been going on in the beauty community, discussing whether or not we think that it's worth spending our money on. And honestly, it's just a good time if you're in love with makeup as much as I am. I especially love colorful makeup. One happy clown over here. Let me actually, do I have any announcements? I don't know if I have any announcements actually. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I wanna talk about this. I don't have any. Oh, actually one. I wanna film another um, full face of trying new makeup. I did buy that Hourglass powder and it's being delivered on Saturday. If my powder does not get delivered on Saturday, I might have that video up a little bit later, but usually I'll put it up on Monday. But if you're like going in Monday morning and you don't see the video there, it's because the hourglass powder is like lost in action. But let me scoochie scoochie to the side. I hope this is okay. Let's start with the uh, Charlotte Tilbury perfumes. I... <laughs> what in the 1994 Hot Topic exclusive Dungeons & Dragons collection is this? What is this? And according to the brand, this is created by master perfumers and backed by science. Or, or sci science. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I haven't seen the science behind this. Maybe I'll ask my husband. He's actually in the meeting right now. He's still home. Charlotte's new collection allows you to spray on a feeling and manifest magic. Yeah, I think we're already... I think we already know what side of science this is on. If you could spray on a feeling, do you not think that that would have been used in like treating mental health issues before it reached these mana potions a la Charlotte Tilbury. I, honestly, I want to ask my husband. My husband has a PhD in experimental psychiatry. Six new fragrances are powered by emotion-boosting molecules backed by the IFF's scent cube algorithm. We need to Google this. I mean, they do say that they employ scientists. I mean, honestly, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna knock it. Maybe they're out here doing the Lord's work. But I will say, I don't think these fragrances are gonna solve your... Um, problems especially one is called calm bliss do you not think that if they had a scent that actually would make you calm that that would have been used otherwise one is called magic a word that we rarely i mean also science is magic so i don't know i'm not is it called more sex sure sure you need to calm down i'm not gonna knock the names i'm not gonna knock the the thing that is behind it what i am gonna knock are those ugly bottles I thought that Charlotte Tilbury has reached her new low with that absolutely hideous packaging that she had for her new lip product. It's truly hideous. It is so bad. It... No bueno. And I saw it in store and just when you think some... You know, sometimes you see things and you're like, maybe it's better in real life. It's not. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, it's not. It's not better in real life. I'm sure the product's beautiful. I think it's a plumping lip oil. I don't need a spicy lip oil. I'll just eat spicy food if I need my lips to be oily and spicy. I'll order a curry. But I will say, the packaging, it seems like the design team of Charlotte Tilbury just like up and left and they're like, later, Char Char, we're doing something else. Because what an interns decide fresh hell is this? I really, really don't like the look of this. I, they, they look like potions. Like, there's a mana potion, there's a dexterity potion, there's definitely a health potion there. This beige one is, doesn't the, wasn't beige like invisibility or something? I don't even know, but like, there are some things going on here, and this just looks like merch for Dungeons and Dragons or World of Warcraft. It doesn't look like luxury 150 USD dollar perfumes. On the other hand, I mean, I guess Charlotte knows her audience. Maybe this is exactly what they want. I don't look at this and think, oh, it's a luxury perfume from a luxury brand. I uh, no. I know I'm, I'm roasting this, but really when I saw that packaging, when I, the, and now with those names, hmm, no, I don't think that that's going to be, <clears throat> I don't think that's going to be something for me. We also have a bunch of new releases from Sephora collection. There was 
quite a few releases from Sephora collection during the Sephora sale and you get 30% off Sephora collection during the sale, but they keep releasing more things. And I feel like, and this is, this is just me. This is, uh, tell me if I'm right or wrong. If you've ever worked at Sephora, tell me if I'm right or wrong. I feel like Sephora collection is that brand that just releases anything that's ever been popular at other Sephora brands in their own line, just at a, like a cheaper price. It's basically the, the upper hand that they have with like being able to see the sale numbers for all the things in store. But they also seem to be releasing a lot of stuff, but they seem to be releasing and discontinuing products at rapid rates. It doesn't really seem as a brand that's like trying to be the brand with staples where you can go back and buy your favorite again because I've heard a lot of people say that when they wanted to go back to Sephora collection and buy that great concealer foundation powder again, it was discontinued. I will say there's a couple of things here. There is a um, luminous shimmering bronzer. Sure, sure. Shimmering bronzers have been popular. I'm not surprised that Sephora is releasing them. There is also this liquid eyeshadow and it says colorful special effects. I think the colorful special effects left the chat because what are, what are these sad pictures here? You're calling this colorful special effects and you're giving me this? You're not even trying to swatch it like intense well. It looks really, really sad. And then we have some pressed powders. I guess this could be nice. I just really don't like this packaging from Sephora Collection. It is one of those like slightly sturdier than Wet n Wild, but I'd rather buy something else kind of a packaging. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And this is a 12 hour mattifying compact powder. Honestly, again, maybe it's great. Maybe it's great. And apparently, yeah, they discontinued something that was an eight hour uh, mattifying powder and now it's doing a comeback as a 12 hour. More efficient, lighter, it ensures 12 hour of undetectable matte, fresh matte complexion, zero detect. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of shades, it makes sense. Matte makeup has really had a comeback the, this last year, I would say. A lot of people are getting into like not like a dead matte, not like a powdered or like a heavy complexion, but like a soft matte and natural matte. So again, Sephora collection, they probably saw that those products were getting more popular and they wanted to re-release a powder to like jump on the trends. But look at this one. This is the new single shadows. It's called colorful single eyeshadows. Is colorful in the room with us right now? How dare you call this colorful single eyeshadows? when it literally looks like colors just was not a part of this equation at any point of, of thinking about or making these. Multi-purpose glittery eyeshadows to be superimposed on eyelid for and face for limited creativity. It says glittery, but I'm guessing they mean sparkly because I don't think these are pressed glitters. Um, yeah. It's a glittery eyeshadow, ideal for creating glitter finished makeup. Again, I don't think it's pressed glitter. I think it's super sparkly. Oh, it seems like they might have some that have some glitter particles in there and some that is just sparkly and some that are just metallic. And I'm like, why would you call it colorful single eyeshadows? That's clearly not what you're doing. And maybe at one point, these single eyeshadows, when they released them, they were colorful, but these are not. These are just single eyeshadows. Or was that just too plain for you? And you, it's like ColourPop when they had that neutral era going on. It was just like, c ColourPop, what? It's like beige pop. In their defense, I feel like they've really picked it up. With that being said, I think my alarm is gonna go off soon because I'm gonna go and buy this one. This is the ColourPop and Beauty and the Beast collection. I've told you I'm gonna be reviewing everything that ColourPop releases this uh, year and this is no exception. I am very excited about the Beauty and the Beast collection. I wanna be reviewing it. I don't, I'm not getting this in PR. At least I have not gotten it yet and I don't have any tracking from ColourPop. That's not a problem at all. I just need to be like a ninja on a website and I'm gonna be ordering I don't think I'm gonna be ordering everything, but my alarm is literally going off in a couple of minutes. I think, this is what I think. I think this palette actually tethers the line a little better than what like the Snow White one did. We're taking colors from the movie, but still making it into a palette that's actually usable because that Snow White, yeah, it literally looked like Snow White, but like all the people that tried the palette was like, actually, this is a very uninspiring color story. And that's the thing with collabs. It needs to be the mashup between getting the feel of the franchise and also like making sense as a makeup product. And I do feel like this does that. I like that it is 
a neutral palette with some vanilla soft yellows. I like that there seems to be an iridescent shade in there. I like that they put two blues in there, which means that if you want to do a blue look, you can. Is this my dream color story? No, but I actually don't think that this is horrible at all. I really, really wish that ColourPop would stop with those absolutely atrocious like compacts for highlighters. Hate those. I actually hate them. So I don't, I will not be buying that because I already know I will be decluttering it because I hate that packaging. Please, please ColourPop, I'm begging you, please stop with that. I do have an affiliate code with ColourPop. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go and order, hopefully. We'll see if this is another Twilight situation and we'll see if you can um, use the code or not. Sometimes you can use the code with collabs, sometimes you can't. Usually when you can't use the code, it's because you're trying to apply it to bundles or already discounted products. So it's a little like give and take when it comes to codes and Colourpop. But I'm gonna try. Um, I think I'm gonna get a lip set. I think I'm gonna get a blush and I wanna get the palette. I say the lip mask I'm not gonna get. I really like the lip masks from Colourpop. I really do, but I'm still using the honey one. The, the Winnie the Pooh one. How long ago was that? Should I stop using that one? Maybe that one is like too old. Maybe I just outed myself as using, I use a lot of old makeup. Listen, you know this, but I, I'm not gonna buy the lip mask, even though I think it's pretty, but like, I don't wanna buy stuff just for the sake of making a video. I wanna buy the things I wanna use. I already know I like the Super Shock highlighters. I don't need to try that. I already know I like the lip mask from ColourPop. I don't need to try that. Ooh. Beauty and the Beast. I'm gonna go and shop, but the thing that I wanna review mainly is the eyeshadow palette. That's the thing I'm gonna include in my full year of ColourPop releases. Maybe I'll just do one with the full collection. I don't know, but I'm gonna go shopping. I'll be right back and I'll let you know if I can get it or not. I am an actual ninja. I was like in and out in 30 seconds. So I bought the palette, I bought the brownie lip kit and I bought the ship uh, blush, the one that's a little brownie. So I didn't get the lip mask. Like I said, I didn't get the highlighter checked out in 30 seconds i was like i was in and out it's like a sneaky thief although i paid for myself so <laughs> maybe i'm not and i was able to use my code as well so i hope you got what you wanted to get from the collection i did get what i wanted to get from the collection and i'm actually very very excited let's talk about the new blend money collection as well because i feel like that is one of the things that really um, got a lot of people talking this week. It also got a lot of creators talking. And this is a collaboration with the winner of the first season of, um, I think it's called Glow Up. I did watch it. I did watch the series, but I will say I don't really remember anything from it other than that it's mostly more editorial, like uh, extreme makeup, like SFX and stuff like that. Things that I don't myself enjoy uh, doing on myself and I don't really enjoy. It's fun with the whole competing element, but that's not really what's for me interesting with makeup. But this is with Ellis Atlantis and Blend Money Cosmetic. They're having a collection together, a collab. I think it's Ellis first collab and it's Blend Money's first collab. And honestly, I'm always happy for anyone that is able to like create things with their favorite brand. And Ellis Atlantis, the way the makeup that they do is very bright and colorful and edgy and just very dramatic. And I think that Blend Money is the perfect brand for them. With that being said, I've seen, I've seen two different camps. I've seen one that's like, well, you should let the creator do whatever they want. And this is me speculating. I'm guessing that from the kind of makeup that Ellis does and the kind of makeup that they created here for the favorite thing, I'm guessing that they love the mattes from Blend Money and they love the bigger like rainbow palettes that they have. And I'm guessing that they wanted to do their own perfect rainbow palette inspired by the reason that they fell in love with the brand. Because I think a lot of people fell in love with Blend Money because of their like, curation of like bigger palettes that have the gradient. The thing though is that like in a way Ellis kind of created something that the brand already has and I'm not saying that any of these colors are dupes and I'm not saying that any of these colors and that this layout is the exact same or that if you swatch these colors next to any of the other colors that Blend Money have I'm sure that all the colors and undertones are different but in a way Blend Bunny already has a rainbow palette and they have had more than one rainbow palette. I think that Blend Money has had at least two rainbow palettes, maybe even 
three. Yeah, the search was also very involved. Although that one is different. I myself will say that that one is different. So for like the normal consumer, someone that is not an Instagram artist, someone that's not a, a drag queen or like a makeup artist that does a lot of editorial makeup or something like that, this might be a hard sell because they might already have a rainbow palette and not have the need for another one. Maybe you're like me and you're always on the hunt for the best and perfect rainbow palette. I love a rainbow palette, I really do. But something I've been saying on my channel for, ooh, I wanna say like five or six years at this point, the rainbow has already been curated for you. Nature curated the rainbow for you. So when you do a rainbow palette, it kinda takes away a little bit of the creativity of seeing what kind of color stories people would put together if they didn't just do every color. Because that's what this is. This is every color. This is the opposite of being edited. This is just, I want all my favorite colors. I want everything I could ever possibly need. And I'm guessing this is a really big palette. Mine is actually out for delivery. I'm getting this one today. I am actually quite confident in saying that I'm gonna love this palette because I love Blend Bunny mattes and I love Blend Bunny's iridescent shades. And this is a matte palette with iridescent shades and it has something that I love in the rainbow palette, which is light shadows, dark colors, neutrals, and a black and a white. So for me, this might actually be my perfect rainbow palette. But if you already own a rainbow palette, but if you already own a rainbow palette and you don't love big palettes, I totally understand why you would look at this and be like, haven't we already seen this? I already own this. I don't need another one. So I'm, I kind of feel like I understand both camps because as someone, again, who loves rainbow palettes, I'm sure I could swatch this out next to other like Blend Money shades and be like, oh, they're, they're different. But at the end of the day, if you're not a person that does this kind of makeup every day, are they different enough? And that's what you need to ask yourself. Is it different enough to make sense in your collection? And do you love big palettes like this? Because Blend Money palettes are usually very big, but this one is even bigger. And I think it really fits in because I'm fairly sure that Ellis is UK based because I feel like that's where they recorded the show. And UK makeup trends are very different from Asian or North American or other parts of the world. Clearly like Italian makeup trends is totally different. Like I see sometimes um, stuff from there. It's just their makeup trends are very much still 2016 makeup, which this is. And I love, I mean, clearly, look at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a relic from 2016 makeup <laughs> community. I just never gave it up. So for me, I think this is cool. Do I still, with my second breath, think they kind of did already have this in their range? I do. I also do think that you should let a creator create whatever they want to do. And if they wanted to do the perfect rainbow palette, why not? But I also think that when you do that, you have to be prepared for a lot of people saying, hey, don't you already have this? So, and I think they were probably prepared for this. I'm very excited. Do you know what I'm most excited about? There are some eyeshadow clusters in here. That's probably really beautiful. Blush palettes are probably really nice. The blushes from Blend Money Cosmetics are matte and very pigmented. Be prepared for that. The Lil, face glimmer thing that they have. I will say it's $16. I am shook it to the core that they are able to release a single at that price. That is very affordable for an indie brand and a single. I'm just throwing that out there. It's that's actually quite a remarkable price, but I am very excited about that one because I have, I'm not able to do a dedicated video on it because it's coming today. I just do not have the capacity to be able to do it. But I will do some swatches, I will throw it up, I will do a look, maybe I'll include it in the future, like get ready with me or something. But I will say, I've seen some people use this one and it looks so pretty swatched out. And the way that they describe it, they describe it as a peachy pink, almost with some shifty powers in there. And I think that sounds lovely. This one is launching this Sunday on April the 21st and it's called Volume One. I don't know what that means. It's launching at 12 p.m. CST, so noon central time. And you can use the code and you can get some money off. I think that this is gonna be just be honest with yourself. Do you need another rainbow palette? If you don't have a rainbow palette, honestly, I do recommend a rainbow palette. Do you have need for something this big? Like, are you doing your makeup sitting down? Do you have space to put up your palette? Because this is not one of those palettes that you can hold and do your makeup. I don't think that this can be possible with this. This is a coffee table. <laughs> That's what this is. This is furniture sized. So sometimes we have to be like, is it perfect for us or not? I have a full table here where I do my makeup. 
I will be able to put this down and I'll be able to dip into a lot of colors. I really do love a rainbow palette and I love that there's iridescent toppers and mostly mattes. I honestly think that for me, this is going to be a rainbow palette I love but just make sure that it's actually right for you as well. Pat McGrath is releasing uh, new shades in her blushes, and this is, um, honestly, I have heard good things about the blushes. The only thing I can say, and I've heard this from others as well, because I have touched these in store, the packaging is very Colourpop plastic packaging. So it's not awful, but it is still not giving luxury packaging. I'm just I'm throwing it out there and they are $29 each. So these are some new shades. It's a beige nude, a cool pink rose, a vivid fuchsia and a vivid orange. Hold. Just bought an orange blush. Do I need another one? It does look a little bit more cool tone though, so I don't know if this will be right for me. Because I, I, I love a orange that is like i love a halloween orange listen sign me up but i also want it to be leaning a little bit more golden i don't want it to be a pinky orange i don't want it to be a coral orange i don't want it to be a red orange i want a more yellowy leaning orange i don't think this is that but new shades are coming i've heard people like the formula but don't love the packaging let me know what you think. And per usual, I will link everything uh, down below in the description box in case you're interested. This is actually something that I got in PR. I haven't been able to like try it out myself, but this is from Tower 28. They are releasing as a celebration for five years of Tower 28, a confetti cake lip, lip softy. These lip softies are really nice. They have a very nice cushiony feel on the lip. They actually do deliver some color and they're just really comfortable on the lips. This is $16 for the um, thing or you can get the special edition box which is the one they sent me for 32 and actually comes with a full box of cake mix yes <laughs> you can make your own uh, like birthday cake confetti cake mix i've never had like this kind of like confetti cake until i moved to the u.s because it's like it's like a sugary cake with the taste of sugar, but I will say the box comes with a recipe of how to make them into uh, cake pops. And I'm like, huh, maybe I will do that. It is a more cool toned purple um, pinky shade. It looks really pretty. I don't know if this is the kind of shade that I love, but I know there's so many people out there that are dying for more purple makeup. And if that's you, this is a good formula. Maybe this could be for you. REM is releasing a new uh, Eternally Red lip set. This is $46 and it comes with a red bag and it has two uh, red lipsticks. It is a drip glossy balm in the shade Shirley and it's the signature classic red lipstick in attention which is uh, Ari's signature red. This like slim lipstick, these are so good. I'm fairly sure I mentioned those in my yearly favorites, not last year but the year before. Great formula. I don't think I've tried the gloss. Are those the new glosses? Drip glossy balm. Yeah, it's the new glosses. Okay, so it's the new gloss formula in the red, and it is that uh, slim lipstick from before in the red with the red pouch. Honestly, it looks really good. I have been buying a lot of red lipsticks of late, and as you can tell, I'm not even wearing a red lipstick today. I'm wearing the gloss that came with the, with the Unearthly Cosmetics collection. I think it looks cute. I want to try that new gloss. Have any of you tried the gloss, the new one from REM? I think they look so yummy, and I really want to try them out. I'm excited. Another thing that is releasing, I'm guessing this one is coming to Ulta, and this is about Face that is releasing some new things. They are releasing some holographic eye paints, which is the liquid eye paints, but in holographic. I, I kind of want to do, I don't know when I'm doing this, but I always do like makeup predictions. And I have been predicting, and this, I mean, if there's one thing I've learned by owning my own beauty brand is like how long production and planning takes. But I thought that Multichromes was gonna come to the mainstream way quicker than they did, but this shows how long it's actually taken. But if you were wanting to try Multichromes, I am actually, I feel kind of confident that About Face is gonna do a fairly good product. They're only $18 though, but they're a little bit more expensive than the normal shimmery ones because they're coming up with more shades in the shimmery ones, the fractal glitter eye paints, which honestly, really good formula. I have one of them. It's really beautiful. And they also are re-releasing the liquid highlighters and the light lock ones. I'm guessing they're making the formula even better. I'm sure these are going to come to Ulta. I am excited to see 
how these multicroms are going to be because I'm looking at the multicroms. You're seeing it here. These are the typical multichromes. These are the multichromes that Indie Brands came out with four years ago uh, in the most typical shades. You know, the, the green to blue to purple, the gold to green to teal, the like, this is, this is, this is Multichrome's starter kit. That's what this is. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I'm just saying, this is what I'm saying. If you own Multichrome's from Indie Brands, I'm letting you know now, nicely, you do not need this. You own this, you don't need it. If you do not own Multichromes and if you're the kind of person that don't wanna risk buying from Indie Brands, maybe try out these. These are the Multichromes that came out from Indie Brands some years back, those kind of colors. If you're looking for some of those more like newer, more exciting ones or the ones with holographic, that's not what this is, but I'm excited to see these come out and I feel like About Face has a really good liquid shadow formula. So I'm guessing these are at least going to be better than the Colourpop ones. Watch these be super mediocre. Ooh, I hope not. Wet n Wild has teased something new. This is a sneak peek. And when you look closely at this picture, I can tell you that it says uh, green tea oil, hyaluronic acid. And I think that they are releasing, and you can see it's like, ice crystals. I think they're releasing some cooling skincare for the summer. And honestly, I think that is amazing. I really hope though, that this is going to be better cooling skincare for the, from the drugstore than that kind of honestly meh primer that NYX had last year, the freeze, freezy primer or something. That one wasn't very cooling on its own. It was just Honestly, it was more marketing than actual like results. I don't feel like the primer did any kind of cooling action. There, are, If you are looking for cooling skincare, there are some really good ones. Clarin has an amazing cooling eye, like face mask. It's very expensive though, but if you're looking for the best, that is amazing. If you're looking for something more affordable, Tony Moly also has a moisturizing cooling mask that's also really good not as effective but also really good the next one i don't recommend it. it it doesn't do anything but i'm excited to see what this is coming from wet and wild though i'm like they're still gonna have to keep the price point somewhere so i really hope it works though i really hope that this will give something but that's what i'm thinking that this is we also saw a sneak peek from elf and they also speaking of cooling this is the stay cool primer sticks so i think that they are doing their take on what nyx had last year which is a cooling primer again i hope this works better than the nyx one did because i didn't really feel that that one worked at all but yeah that one is coming soon as well i'm excited to see more cooling skincare come out because if you're like me and you're living in a warm climate oh the sun just came out that's very exciting Cooling skincare is amazing. This one is very intriguing to me. This is from Clarins. And cl speaking of Clarins, they are releasing the iconic lip comfort oils in a balm stick. Right? It comes in six shades. Fig, cherry, almond, liche, uh, pitaya, and pale pink. Everybody got a pale pink. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened there? I don't know. Maybe they couldn't figure out a fruit or a flower that's pale pink. They're like, pale pink. That's what we're getting. But it seems very intriguing. It's coming soon. And I am intrigued to see how this is going to be. Because like the lip oils are iconic. And if they can get a good lip oil balm stick... I feel like that could be a hit because people are really into those kind of things right now. The packaging also looks absolutely stunning. I'm intrigued. Speaking of lip products, there's also a new lip product coming from Raban Makeup. They're coming out with the Drama Lips Glassy. It is two new glassy finishes, 11 ultra pigmented and three shimmery pearly colors. Um... I think these are supposed to be a little bit more like intense, glassy, pigmented lips. Sure. I guess. I think these are sold at Ulta. They look nice. There is an orange in here, but it seems to be, it could be a little bit too cool tone of an orange. Like I said, I have so many orange lippies that I love that at this point, I'm not buying something unless I see that it's an orange that I want. 
I don't think that's too much to ask. Next thing I am actually getting sent to me in PR and nobody's more surprised than I am, but I got a message from Ellis Brooklyn and they're wanting to send me their new perfume and I'm like, <laughs> Yes, please. I love perfume. So this is the Ellis Brooklyn Miami Nectar. This is blue. It's super cute. And it is a pineapple scent. That is the top note. And I've said that before. I love pineapple scents so much. Pineapple, palm leaves, coconut water, jasmine, plumeria, lily of the valley. Lily of the valley makes me worried because that is like poison to me in perfumes. I don't love that at all. But then it has tree moss, salted woods, sweet amber woods, and vanilla. I'm thinking this will be a very tropical island. I mean, it's called Miami Nectar, but I think this is going to be sipping a tropical drink amongst a more lush tropical area. Not like the Mediterranean that is like dry. People when they see Mediter like things inspired by the Mediterranean, they're like, why is it lush and green? I'm like, why have you not been here? <laughs> it's not a lot of the Mediterranean is not lush and green. But I'm very excited to be trying this one out. I will of course report back when I have it and tell you how I feel about it, but that seems very intriguing to me. Also, is the Marilyn Monroe estate going broke because they are doing a collab with She Glam? Way to make an icon just seem cheap. Why would you do a collab with Chi Glam? I mean, I know Chi Glam is probably paying a lot of money, but like you're not doing this this icon any so like let the woman rest. Now she has to be sold at Chi Glam? Oh come on. I just, I really, really dislike this because I don't, and this is the thing. If Marilyn Monroe was alive, would she be doing a collab with She Glam? Why then are you when she's passed away? Why are you like going over her head and doing this? I think this is ridiculous. And honestly, the palette looks blah as well. I just, this makes me sad when we're seeing collabs estates of like dead celebrities are doing collabs with brands and with stuff that they would never do if they were alive and i'm just like could we not this i am a million percent buying and this is from the yummy skin family by nanessa myricks and she is releasing the yummy skin low lighters light reflecting tinted balm so this is the same formula that she has in her blushes i'm guessing and she's releasing them in a shimmery formula they look delicious and since it's called low lighter, I'm guessing they're going to be a little bit more demure. Soft focus glow without amplifying texture. I want to get the peachy gold. It's called low key. Um, I haven't seen these yet, but I will definitely buy. Definitely. And if I can find them somewhere, we'll put them down below. But like, how beautiful is that low key? I love it. Also, we need to get Samantha the Unbothered one, right? Oh, we forgot to talk about the Melt Cosmetics, the Smoke Sessions 2 collection. They already released this one. I think that this is the Smoke Sessions 2 palette. And there also is four... No, they're not gel liners. Two gel liners. One of them is Afterlife, which is a re-release from the... Um, Beetlejuice Juice collection. Honestly, it's a great shade. I'm pretty sure I still have it. And then there are Metal Ice, which is, I'm guessing, a little bit like the um, the liquid, like, moussey colors by Colourpop. What are they called? You know what I'm talking about. I'm guessing it's that. Like, you can paint them on and they won't, like, disturb what's going on underneath. One of them is a multi-chrome. Again, I'm telling you, this is multi-chrome starter kit it is that purple going to bronze going to green if you have multi-chromes you have this one you don't need to get all worked up over this one because you might already own it again i'm excited to see multi-chromes coming to more mainstream brands but this isn't a unique color combo this is the one that everyone starts with i didn't buy the palette because i like purple palettes but i don't purple isn't my absolute favorite color to buy and i've been slightly disappointed by some of the melt palettes as of late i just kind of fell out of love with the brand and i also don't i don't anymore I don't anymore do all dark looks without any light colors. And I could so easily, I could so easily go into my collection and add something to this. But I could also just go into my collection and bring out a purple palette. Like the one that Deandra did with uh, Bella Beauté Bar. That is, according to me, a better curated purple palette than this one. I could just use that instead. Honestly, I want to use that over this one. Not that it's ugly, 
But like this isn't bringing something new to the table for me and I'm not as swoon with melt as I used to be. It is available though and I'm not a, oh it's coming to the Sephora website as well. There we go. YSL is releasing another one of these gloss like lips. I don't know I don't know what they're doing. It's like they had that competition where like three different teams got to make up like three different formulas and then they decided to release all of them. This is the Love Shine Candy Glow Tinted Butter Balm. So this is a balm instead of what's been go I I don't know what's going on. Why did they need a third formula? Nobody knows. Butter balm. Nourishing formula. Pop of color, sheer glow finish. Oh, was this the one that had the pH adjusting thing? Maybe that's the one that's making it different. Because I think that this one had the pH adjusting one, which just means that you're getting various shades of pink. Whatever you think you're getting, you're getting fuchsia. You think you're getting brown? No. You're getting fuchsia. Everybody gets fuchsia. L'Oreal is releasing a new highlighter. This is from the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. I don't know why this highlighter is under the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear, but I'm not out here to argue. Maybe they can't afford to trademark something new. What do I know? It is $13. It's a long wear highlighter. Sure. I don't feel like highlighters is the product that's not long wearing on me, but you do whatever you feel like you need to do. It is an icy gold and a champagne glow. I will say when you look at the swatches, I do feel like maybe they could have had one that is a little darker slash warmer. But on the other hand, maybe it is a sheer formula, like one of those with a transparent base. And then they usually can like stretch over quite a lot of skin tones. So I'm not going to judge it based on this. I'm going to see what people think about it. I'm not going to be falling over myself to be buying this one but i think it's exciting to see that like highlighters truly are making a comeback both at the drugstore and at like sephora and more high-end brands and i'm like huh i thought that was gonna happen last year maybe when i'm doing my makeup prediction i'm just technically one year ahead i should be doing my makeup prediction for 2025 at the end of 2023. Maybe that's what I need to do, like a two-year project. Another thing that's being released at the drugstore is that NYX is releasing their butter melts as blushes as well. This bronzer, I tried it. I've tried it since as well. It is a smidgen too pigmented for my liking. I, I like a bronzer that is a little bit more buildable, sheer buildable. I'm actually wearing, I've been digging out this one I'm wearing a lot. This is the powder bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. I have it in medium. This is that like sheer but buildable co coverage that is just so effortless to work with. The next one is very pigmented straight out of the gate and it gives you a lot immediately and it's not my favorite. So I'm guessing these blushes are going to be very, very pigmented as well. And when you see that bright pink here, some people love a super pigmented blush and I actually do too. I prefer a pigmented blush more than I prefer a pigmented bronzer but also like i wonder if this is going to pick up as easily as the the bronzer did it's going to be interesting i'm sure i'm going to try it out when it gets here another product that we finally have a date on is we talked about this before there are new sun kisser liquid blushes by maybelline these look so beautiful and they are available now in europe if you're living in europe you can start go looking for these and they're coming on the 1st of may to amazon ulta walmart and in store at target and walmart this summer i will definitely be trying this out it looks absolutely stunning but now we know that it's coming the 1st of may which is not that far away. We've also seen the first product from the collaboration that we talked about a while ago, which is between Wicked Widow Beauty and The Crow. And this is the first product. This is a handbag backpack hybrid. And honestly, again, some collaborations really will stri strike a chord with people if you love the franchise. If you love, like in this case, the movie, this will be amazing for you. I really do hope though that they will sell the pieces individually too because I'm sure there are some people that are just going to be interested in like me. They're just going to be interested in the makeup, but this seems very creative and very fun and I'm super excited to see what else is coming from this collab. I will keep you updated because I know a lot of you are super intrigued to see what this collab is going to be. Sweet is doing a collab with Lydia Millen. I'm not super familiar with her work. She is a creator that does like rich influencer living on the UK countryside, which as you can tell really isn't the life that I'm living. 
more way, more ways than one. But she's doing a collab with Sweet. And if you didn't know, Sweet is a Swedish makeup brand created by a professional makeup artist. They do really interesting stuff. And it's exciting to see that they are branching out now and that they're becoming a little bit more international. So they're doing two lip crayons and two lip colors. They seem to be very like wearable shades. And I will say the lip crayons actually have some really interesting colors, like a more beigey brown and a more corally orange. And then two lip liners that you probably can mix and match with both of these for different results. And this is like a mid-range brand. The lipsticks is $28 and the lip liners are $24. They are available now. And honestly, I think it's really fun for them to do a collab. I don't know if they've done a collab with anyone before, but I don't think they've done a collab with anyone outside of Sweden, at least before. So I'm hoping that this will be maybe a way for them to be even more internationally like known. Benefit is releasing a new product as well, and this is the Splash Tint and the Plush Tint. So there are lip products, either a tint that is a dewy gloss finish or a pl the Plush Tint that is a matte finish. So it's 12 shades in each, which I think is a really big drop. For being Benefit, this is a big drop. They're dropping 24 different things. And I think it looks really fun. I, it's really hard for me to see the colors here. If I see these in store, I might try one of them out. I've been really, you can't tell it today, but I've been really into matte lip colors as of late, like honestly really appreciating a matte lip. So I might be into trying that. And I'm excited to see them release something else than brow products and blushes. Go Benefit. And mascaras. How many mascaras does the brand have? Like 27? There is also a cream bronzer by made by Mitchell. And there seems to be quite a lot of different shades in here. And there also is a very... And this is something that we don't see a lot when it comes to cream products like this. There seems to be like a light one that's cool toned, a light one that's golden toned. And it seems to be like a medium one that's a little bit more, like there seems to be different undertones for different, like not, because I see, okay, I'm not making sense. You probably know what I'm talking about. Sometimes with cream products and, I understand sometimes it's expensive to do different SKUs, but sometimes with cream products, it's like, here are four shades, fair, light, medium, deep. But the fair one might be cool tone, which would never work for me, even if I wanted to buy the fair tone. Sometimes you don't get the undertones with stuff like this. And I'm very excited to see that. So if you like to try a cream bronzer, but you're having a difficult time finding an undertone for you, maybe this will be for you. $18 is extremely extremely affordable for a single product like this. Yeah, it's like red undertone deep brown, medium neutral brown, light warm brown, fair neutral, like it's very impressive. I think these are being sold both at his website and also at Beauty Bay. I'll see where I can find them and link them down below. Let me see if there's anything else that I would like to talk about. Uh, before we wrap this up. Maybe actually we can talk about this. I never talk about DNG, Dolce Gabbana's brand, but let me tell you, they're releasing some new blushes. Look at how pretty these are. They look so incredible. And this actually looks luxurious. The packaging, the imprint, the colors, the presentation, it looks beautiful. And then we have the bronzers. They have a black lid instead. This is what I mean with like sometimes luxury releases really do look luxury. And when you look at these, these look expensive. The packaging, the embossing, it looks expensive. I think it's really, really pretty. I think they're probably available on their website. I will link them down below, but I think DNG is sold at Ulta as well. I will, I will do some research, but maybe you'll be able to find it there as well. But I think that that, remember we talked about that eyeshadow palette they released that just looked like something from Claire's. This looks designer, high-end, expensive luxury. Really liking. I actually think that that will be it for this week. Let me scooch back. I hope you're having an amazing, amazing Friday. I know I am. I'm actually heading to the hairdresser on Friday. So when you're seeing this, I'm probably getting a little bit of a snip snip and some color refreshed, which is gonna be really lovely. If you're wondering about any of the things that I talked about in today's episode, everything will be linked down below in the description box together if I have any affiliate codes or if I know any release dates or anything like that. So don't forget to check there before you leave. And also don't forget to subscribe before you leave and if you're not done yet if you want to watch something more the algorithm is recommending something for you here floating on the side of me but if you need to go i hope you have a continued good day and i will see you in my next one bye